Welcome back to Practice Update. I'm your host, Dr. Farzana Hafizullah. Joining me again today is Dr. Eric Janash. Great to have you back again. It's nice to be here. So we know you've done a quite a bit of work on rare histologic variants of kidney cancers. Can you tell us more about some of these less common histologic variants that clinicians should be aware of? Yeah, so uh, the, the most common histological subtype, of course, is clear cell renal cell carcinoma, which comprises about 70% of, of the, uh, the patients that are out there. But then there, the, the other less common ones are fairly common in themselves, including papillary type 1 and type 2. And they're interesting that papillary type 1 may be driven by a MET mutation, uh, and papillary type 2 can sometimes be, be driven by a ephemerate hydratase mutation. Then we have a chromophobe uh, renal cell carcinoma, which at least in the hereditary setting can have a mutation in, in folliculin. And, and we also uh, recently published a paper showing that there's a downregulation of a particular master regulatory gene called HNF1 beta. So these are kind of the, the, the two or three, if you count papillary as two different entities, most common subtypes. We have rarer subtypes that are out there. For example, medullary renal cell carcinoma is typically found in individuals who have sickle trait will occur in young individuals, is devastating in its rapidity and, and also uh, in its, in its re refractoriness to, to treatment. So I think these are the, the most common ones that we would be seeing in, in practice these days. So let's talk about management of these rare subtypes compared with clear cell. Can you highlight that for our viewership? In the non-metastatic setting, you're still going to, if you have a patient that, that uh, shows up with a, uh, a non-clear cell renal cell carcinoma in the primary you're going to perform a nephrectomy uh, if they don't have metastatic disease, and I think that's really a you know, standard approach for, this, uh, for this particular, these particular entities. Uh, medullary renal cell carcinoma is a little bit trickier. There is still, if you have an individual who shows up and they, they do have that primary tumor in place, it's probably still reasonable to perform the nephrectomy up front if they haven't had spread to other organs in the body yet. But with that latter histology, the probability of seeing recurrence and, and, and uh, metastatic disease is, is extremely high, and it's going to happen uh, very soon afterwards. So for that subgroup of individuals, you have to watch them very, very closely with, with imaging. So would you say that these are distinct disease processes for each of these subtypes, or can you classify them you know, or manage them similarly? So they are clearly distinct, and it is due to our mm -hmm. lack of really having developed targeted treatments for each of these that we end up treating them fairly similarly. A couple of caveats in that. So for example, broadly speaking, in terms of what's FDA approved, you're going to end up using similar sorts of agents, at least for, for papillary and, and, uh, and chromophobe. Um, the, the papillary, because there is that potential for MET mutation, there, a drug like cabozantinib or some of the MET inhibitors uh, that are in clinical trials would obviously make sense uh, in, in those individuals. And interestingly, papillary type 1 and type 2 both can have MET dysregulation, not only mutation, but upregulation of, of MET. So, so, so using a, a drug like cabozantinib makes, makes a lot of sense. For, for medullary renal cell carcinoma, if metastatic disease develops, you can try the standard TKIs. I've had a couple of individuals who've actually had dramatic responses to, to, to bevacizumab um, with, uh, with this, but, but a lot of times you'll end up using chemotherapy, um, bladder cancer-like chemotherapy regimens or things like carboplatin, paclitaxel, bevacizumab. One other entity that I really wanted to bring up, though, is the uh, the folliculin, um, the, the sorry, the the fumarate hydratase or HLRCC subset. This is now a hereditary disorder where individuals will, um, in their families, have these cutaneous leiomyomas. They'll have uterine fibroids mm -hmm. um, and rapidly growing uh, renal cell carcinomas, which look like type two. If these metastasize. There are um, a combination of bevacizumab and erlotinib has actually been shown to be dramatically effective in a subset of individuals. And I have a number of, of, of young individuals who, who came in, in in terrible shape um, from the disease who, who had a, an, almost a miraculous improvement uh, with this regimen. So it's something that one really needs to think about in that subset alone. Excellent to note. Well, are there any biomarkers or molecular targets that can be useful in directing therapy here? So looking at the, if there is a hereditary syndrome yes. uh, and you, you suspect that and then getting germline testing to show that, I think that would be valuable, especially for example in this HLRCC population. With regards to things that are mature, um, the MET 
level or MET score in papillary renal cell carcinoma may help predict whether or not people are going to respond to MET-targeted therapy, uh, but it's certainly not um, a binary thing. It's not like in the absence of you'll have zero response, in the presence of you're going to have 100% response. So, so it's, it's not something that I would recommend in, in general practice, but it is certainly a, a, um, um, something that, that's you know, being worked on and we're going to see whether or not it'll enter into practice. Well, can you highlight any compelling clinical trials that might be ongoing for these patients? So there's a, there's the PAP MET trial. So there's uh, that 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 is ongoing. There's also um, a, several other trials that are that are ongoing around um, the country, sort of looking at um, different different regimens. There's a trial at our institution looking at uh, looking at cabozantinib in the uh, in the non-clear cell patient population, in particular in the papillary patient population. So so there's there's this this large it's a, it's a cooperative group study that I mentioned the PAPMET study which really is looking at uh, a number of different MET targeted agents uh, in the metastatic uh, papillary patient population and also this this at MD Anderson this this cabozantinib trial. Excellent. Well, thank you very much again for sharing this expertise with us. Um, very useful. And I know we're going to see you back here soon. <laughs> you certainly will. Thank you. Excellent. And to our viewers, thank you again for joining us for another edition of Practice Update. Please join us again soon. I'm Dr. Farzana Hafizullah.